would like to thank you for the uh, in the first place uh, the School of um, Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for this opportunity for me to uh, explain my story. Just a simple story. I, sh I have to say I don't have any academic background. I studied journalism for three years. I've got a diploma in journalism, but I didn't uh, work really too long as a journalist. I did some different things. But my passion of my life is in music. I did it all the time while I was on the stage since age three years old. Like, and by 20, I was already fed up with it, so I wanted to do something different. And then I have very big break, and then I did my music again. And I live in different countries. Uh, I moved from Ukraine to England. I lived in England six years, and from England I moved to, to Germany. My husband is German, my family is German. And uh, now since 13 years I live in Germany, and since six years I started a little bit uh, again to build up on my music career. Um, back in the 90s I have a couple of hits made with uh, some famous uh, producer, uh, Volodymyr Bobeshko, he is a very famous producer in our country. We did a few hits with him, but that was about it, and then now I start my career again. But actually today I want to tell you not about uh, my music career, that's not so interesting, I think but about uh, some story which I discovered last summer. And my friends, I have a lot of friends back in Ukraine, they're scientists and journalists and some other people of intellectual activities, and they encouraged me to discover a little bit more on this story because uh, back in Ukraine we don't have much information on it, but here on the West they do have something to discover. But first maybe to get you a bit know me, I want to show you some pictures. Oops, that's not, that's some music. The pictures. That's a man, uh, uh, Alfred Windelberger. He uh, also one of the, of those who inspired me to uh, proceed to discover the story. You can see I, I hold the book, uh, Heis Heimat, uh, Halitzian in Bild. Uh, it's, it's a book about um, a homeland of uh, Halitzia Germans. We have Hali uh, German people living in Halitzia since uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. And uh, Alfred Windelberger, uh, he's one of this, um, uh, he's a grandson of the um, person who um, was a Galizian Deutsche and left in year 1940. I will tell you about it later. Now I will go to another picture. That's about diplomacy. That's uh, my picture from my recent festivals, which I did in Bukovina in Karpath Karpatian, Berge, uh, uh, Karpatian Mountain. Sorry, I can mix the uh, words uh, German and English because, uh, as I said, I lived six years in uh, England, uh, England, and then I moved to Germany. And since 13 years, I didn't actively use my English language. But I think it will be still OK. That's uh, oh, on the radio in Lviv. Uh, Lviv is the capital of Galicia. That's in the West Ukraine. Uh, I, I present, actually, it was a program when I was presented some song uh, uh, the program uh, called Privit uh, Nas um, which means uh, hello to the uh, Ost front. front. We have uh, uh, this uh, war is going on in the Ost and uh, in the East, and uh, I present some song of mine uh, um, greeting our uh, soldiers there. That's a concert, uh, that's some uh, um, advertisement of the concert in Stuttgart. That's some shooting photo session in the field. That's again in Bukovina, very nice build. You can see there are a lot of different people from different backgrounds. There are some soldiers also, they wanted to participate with some group of the soldiers. They were perfect singers. And some simple people from the village and some uh, uh, participants from, Ki from Kiev, from the capital, some uh, 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 professional artists. And I am, I'll show you where I am. I'm over here. That's me. That's me. Those my musicians and my friends behind. Also very, you can feel that the atmosphere very nice, very warm. Uh, people are very friendly in this area. They organize for us some good festival. Ostermarsch Elwangen, that's um, some event which take place in Elwangen, in my uh, a place where I live. They organize some, uh, it's it connected more to the left 
uh, wing of the uh, politician and they organize every year some, some kind of protest against the war and uh, weapon and sort of. So th this year I think they had a, uh, they every year they present some, uh, some certain topic on this uh, uh, Ostermarsch and uh, the topic was Ukraine because it was a hot, hot spot and they invited me as a local artist as some um, exotic flower so I was doing some performance there. That's a work in, um, st in the studio. That's again the festival back in the Ukraine. They prized me with some prize because I, I live in Germany so long, but I still like Ukrainian music. That's uh, some magazine. Uh, I'm on the cover of the magazine, which uh, produced in Germany. And actually that's in line with what we say in this conference. It says Musica Abidinyat Ludi, which uh, means uh, music unite the people. Uh, it was an article about me where I was presenting my, uh, what I'm doing. <coughs> That's again the, uh, uh, my work in the studio. That's the night, Ein Nachtmittag mit international, Internationale Musik. Again, the concert which I organize in my uh, place in, in Germany. Uh, well, I have to say I work with different, what, what's good about Germany, I found that you can find here the artists from all around the world. For example, um, this artist, he's from uh, Sheffield, from England. He lives in Germany since 30 years, he has family here. But uh, on other occasions I was working with artists like G. Lee, she's a, uh, um, a jazz, p p p uh, jazz music, music and she she, she holds the prize also in year 2014 in Baden-Württemberg for uh, being the best uh, uh, jazz music in this area. Well, I, and I met also la Latin American uh, mu musicians, uh, which I also did project with them. So in, in Germany, uh, in sense of uh, internationality, it's, you, you can find artists from all around the world, and I would say they're best of the best. It's the only problem with them is that uh, the, ma uh, the market is too, ang too little, uh, or, or they're too full, and uh, it's difficult to find your place in it. Yeah. So I didn't look. Uh, when did I start? What what uh, what was the time? At, um, about one five. One fifty. Fifty. Just about eight uh, seven minutes. I already speaking. Oh uh, yeah, about that. Okay. Yeah. Good. That's another concert in Stuttgart in Ukrainian community. Catholic Ukrainian community that's uh, um, from my uh, home uh, uh, city Lem uh, Lviv in the library that's exactly that's uh, I think the last concert was in November also in Elvangen I presented uh, fol uh, folk music because I like both I like contemporary music I do music for radios and uh, I also like very much folk music I think the UNESCO uh, recognized that Ukrainians uh, wrote the most of the uh, mm, amount of the f folk, folks, uh, folk uh, things. It, they, they count about 2,000 of them, but I think there are much more. The work in the studio, Lviv television, concerts, cover, radios, yeah, okay. Good. Then we start our presentation. Yeah. Where do I go, Will? Home. Slideshow. Exactly. And from beginning. And from the beginning. Excellent. And then just these ones too. Okay. Thank you very much. So when I start uh, when I start this uh, uh, search of m discover of mine, I I didn't do it in particular for uh, this forum, but uh, the um, administration of the institute asked me to relate it some uh, to the uh, topic of the of this forum, and uh, I was looking through the website and I found actually very good um, a speech of a former. Um, a chairperson for Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, Francesca Rotelli. That's what he says. Cultural diplomacy is indispensable if we don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. 
because we have to know how important is our cultural heritage and creative industry for the future of the world, uh, of the world because we have to know that peace cannot exist without mutual comprehension. So the key word here, don't forget. Don't forget the past because you cannot move to the future. Uh, that's, it is so simple. Um, since Middle Ages, many m nationalities and ethnic groups have lived in the West Ukraine. German were one of them. The first written documents that had mentioned the German settlement in West Ukraine date back to the 13th century. If somebody said to you that uh, German came only with Russian Empire, don't believe them, because I already have this experience. It was my one scientist, he did exhibition in Kiev, and he uh, claimed in his uh, works that uh, the first German came to Ukraine in, eight, uh, in 1918. Uh, because uh, a Russian uh, uh, king uh, invited them to work with them together. That's not true, actually. Uh, in Lviv, you can find a lot of evidence uh, that uh, the Germans come to Ukraine. As, uh, they were living <coughs> together with Ukrainians very peacefully <coughs> since the 13th century. So I'm, I'm trying to uh, advocate a little bit German people here because, you know, my family is German, and uh, I understand a, a little bit more on... Uh, our common history and about mentality of the Germans. Um, the German took an active part in trade and cultural life. German Americans had uh, a great impact on development of cities of the West Ukraine, uh, such as Lviv, Samber, Drohobych, Kolome, Chernivtsi. I know that this city doesn't tell you much, but for example, Chernivtsi is a hometown from uh, Mila Kunis. The can Mila, mm -hmm. you, you know Mila Kunis. She was last year, she was together with her husband on visit, she was filming some uh, some film in uh, Budapest, and <coughs> she was take a trip, one day trip to uh, Chernivtsi, to her hometown. Um, Lviv, do you, do you know who is, um, uh, uh, Her Mazo? Can you see this with Her Mazo? Can you see this with Her uh, so Her Hermazov was a founder of Mazokism, so he, also, he was born in, in Lviv. Yeah. Well, it was a lot of good people born in Lviv. I think Bozena can tell you about it, because we share the history. There was a lot of Polish uh, uh, cultural uh, um, um, heritage uh, back in Lviv. It was very international, as uh, other uh, speakers said about uh, uh, her hometown, uh, East Jerusalem, it was very international. It was extremely international. It's still extremely international. When you go there, uh, you found on the left, uh, you found Orthodox Church. On the uh, link, you, fo you found Catholic Church. Straightforward, you find some synagogue. And why do you find some, uh, some Armenian Church? And when I uh, studied in my class, I had, I had Jews. I had um, people from... Uh, uh, White, uh, white Russia, I have uh, all sort of uh, ethnic group and nationalities and we lived perfectly all together. We didn't have any problem with each other. So where well, I was. And that, that, that was actually the uh, map of uh, Halisha. Uh, you can see that from the uh, or east uh, it was. Uh, it has a uh, border with the Russian Empire, and uh, there was a kingdom of Poland. Thank you very much, <laughs> Polish people. Uh, there was Germany, and here was an uh, Austrian, uh, Austrian Hungarian Empire. Gal Galicia, Galicia was uh, uh, Galicia Montomeri. It was another name when the Austria overtook it. They uh, give it another name. Montomeri. It's a broken name for Volodymyr because uh, Volodymyr found this uh, place. Uh, found the capital of uh, Galicia, uh, Lviv. Um, it, but it was not invention. You, you can find in a lot of uh, articles on the internet that it was invention of, of uh, Austro-Hungarian. No, the Galicia was, uh, it was uh, one of the kingdom of, uh, uh, this time it was a uh, uh, Kiev, Russia. And Kiev, Russia was content of uh, different uh, kin little kingdoms. And the Galicia was, Galicia and Volhynia was uh, one of these kingdoms. And uh, uh, later in the history, it was Halisha and Lontomeri and so on and so forth. But it, it's not, uh, it has very long history. It was not invention of uh, um, anybody. So my presentation I dedicate to, the, uh, to those 
um, a German descendant from the former Austrian province of Alicia, which is cu currently divided between Poland and Ukraine, uh, was a former capital in Lviv. Uh, Franz Josef, he was the last um, imperator of the uh, Austrian Galician Emporium. Uh, last time he visited Lviv in year 1903, when he was opening his beautiful church, St. Elizabeth Church, uh, in uh, honor of his uh, uh, be beloved uh, wife, who died already to that time, uh, known very well as Sisi. She, her name was Elizabeth. Did you hear about Sisi? So this church uh, uh, in, in Lviv or Hamburg, it's uh, uh, St. Elizabeth Church in honor, built in honor of the wife of Franz Josef. Good. Uh, this picture I took from the website of uh, Halitzen, a German uh, society here in Germany, and it says thousands, perhaps millions of people around the world are dis descendant from the German-speaking settlers of Austro-Hungarian province of Galicia. Um, the turbulent political politics of this region during the 18th and 20th century resulted in this territory changing countries several times and scattered the descendants of the settles to the different corners of the globe where many are now rediscovering their roots from the official, that's from the official statement of this organization. Um, in the USSR, uh, the memory about Germans living together with um, Ukrainians uh, Polish and Jews many generations long was totally forgotten and it was done in purpose. Uh, the Soviet government decided to change their geographic names of former German colonies in the west of Ukraine to one sounding more Russian. I have here a big, li a big list of the uh, um, places which Russian changed. Yeah? For example, here. That's all this, uh, uh, that's the German cities actually, German towns and cities, and they were completely changed the names you wouldn't recognize. Uh, uh, like, for example, Rosenberg, of Ukrainian, Heis Rojeva, so no, or uh, uh, Lemberg was uh, named as uh, uh, Lvov, or um, uh, Ehrenhardt was named Chistopilla. And this, this sort of thing, I, I didn't know. I lived there for 27 years in Ukraine. I didn't know about it. It's all German, you know? It's all German. Um, of course, today in internet you can find everything. Uh, yeah. Growing up in Lviv, uh, old name Lemberg, the historical capital of Galicia, I was always interested about the topics. The signs of German uh, cultures are everywhere to find. To satisfy my interest, I had to learn German, uh, as many historical documents of that time was never translated. In the time of uh, Austrian monarchy, educated Ukrainians spoke both languages, Ukrainian and German, like, for example, bilingual um, <coughs> writer, Ivan Franco. Uh, Ivan Franco uh, was a uh, candidate for the, uh, 19 si in the year 1916 for Nobel Prize in the li literature. Unfortunately, he died this year. That's why he didn't get a chance to get it. He was a Ukrainian poet, writer, social and uh, a literary critic, a entrepreneur, economist, political activist, doctor of philosophy, ethnographer, the author of the uh, first detective novel and modern poetry in the Ukrainian language. He's a very key figure in, in our literature. Uh, to Germany I moved um, later in life, and uh, that's another, just another picture, graphic from Lemberg. I just wanted to show you how old it is. Uh, to Germany, I moved later in life and learned the German language from scratch in my 30s. The topic of Galicia German I rediscovered last summer when my friend, that's my friend Mila, she invited me to attend uh, uh, the latest tourist to a German settlement in the Lviv region. Um, so we went to some scary places or some. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then I met uh, some of Galicia Germans whose family lived in Galicia and were relocated in 1939-1940 uh, following Molotov-Ribbentrop Act. 
here is it was I think it was a picture of Molotov Ribbentrop somewhere yeah here is uh, Ribbentrop and that's Stalin it was political decision totally political decision and they just decided like this to relocate many people um, I also met uh, uh, some of the uh, Halitze German here All right. Uh, here in Germany, and uh, one of them was Mr. Uh, Alfred Windelberger. Uh, he presented me some picture uh, uh, of uh, his family in Ludwikivka, that's uh, um, a village in Carpathian Mountains, village of the uh, um, hunters and uh, foresters. Uh, also, I saw some nice picture of the people. Um, uh, the other woman, he, she contacted me Frau um, Buchheister, she also presented me a story of Hamaze, who was from uh, this area. And, um, well, from the, unfortunately I, I, I passed the time, but the point is that from uh, some uh, very, um, uh, from the old graves, I, last summer I didn't know anything about it, I just saw the old graves, nothing else. And meeting, going here, and meeting the people make me feel that uh, yeah, they were they were as citizens of Galicia, the same like we were, but but it was just political decision to move them away from there. I think it was very unfair, but they survived. They keep loving their motherland. They even produced some magazines. All this year, we didn't know about it at all. It was for me totally. Uh, uh, new to know that there are somebody who also have so much interest in my uh, uh, in Ukrainian territory uh, in, in Lviv or in our issues but it was quite interesting to meet all of them and uh, when now when I'm in Lviv and when I'm passing the old church uh, um, old uh, German church it's Lutheran church I would like to pray for these unknown citizens who uh, loved uh, our muscle in the same way as we did but uh, unfortunately, uh, due to political decisions, they have to be moved away from there. And uh, we didn't know anything about them. And they felt themselves all these years like they were be betrayers. But they were not betrayers. They were the same citizens, just another ethical group. You know, like, like today we live in, uh, in Berlin and somebody will go and pick up on you and say, well, you are, uh, I don't know, a lot of Turkish. Because you are Turkish, you, are, you have to go back to Turkey. But, uh, so uh, in the same way, these uh, regimes, they decide somehow that people, they, they are allowed to play gods and just put people from one place to another. Thank you very much. <laughs> any questions? Yes. Do we have any questions for our speaker? Good. Okay. Uh, yes, we have you, a question. Do you involve music as as an agent, you can use your music. I, I understand you're, um, you're an ambassador of your region, of your hometown, and I can see the love that you have for your hometown. And I, 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 I wonder if you're, uh, I don't know if it's a, if the government or the region uh, official can support you as a team and to go and talk more internationally. About your region? Well, we, we with talk your with use of music since I learned. We talked with you previously. It depends who you talk to. If uh, the person in the embassy, if they, we have good uh, understanding uh, in between us, and yeah, we can talk, they can help me. But uh, uh, the problem is uh, they declare themselves as a very poor country, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, whatever you ask them, they will say, no money, no money. Well, they can uh, uh, do you some in, uh, information support. They can put, uh, for example, the advertisement from your concert on their website, uh, this sort of things. But you not, not more than that. Or organization. Yeah. 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 But uh, uh, actually, it was one very interesting project, which I, I succeed. We had some Metodius days in uh, my village. Metodius it was some saint <coughs> who was very important for the Slavic people. And uh, we didn't know about it, uh, that uh, they have such a big celebration because he was captured there, he was sitting <coughs> in prison. And every year they do big celebration, however it's a big small village, 5,000 uh, citizens, <coughs> and uh, they do big celebration with inviting uh, different uh, di diplomats from uh, uh, Slavic <coughs> countries. And I realized that from Ukraine there was nobody uh, there. So I 
uh, cool to uh, our uh, ambassador and said, look, there is a, a great event going on, why you wouldn't apply? He said, well, they, they never invite us, actually. I said, well, there are some events where you have to apply for it, yeah, and then they, they will invite you. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, thank you for the tips, thank you for uh, telling me. So uh, now, since last year, yeah, they, invite, uh, they invite us to this celebration. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you want to hear one more song? It, it's very contemporary. Mm -hmm. We don't have time. I don't. We don't have time. Okay.